In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy your Angular project using AWS, S3 Bucket, and CloudFront. Let's get started. All right, first we're going to create a new Angular project, uh, ng new, and I'm going to call it Angular AWS S3. I'll hit enter. Since I'm using Angular 20, it's asking about zone lists. We'll say yes. Style sheet CSS, server side rendering, we'll just say no to that. Uh, it's created all the folders. It's now installing the packages. So once this is complete, we'll open this up in our IED. Uh, I'll be using IntelliJ. All right, so the project has loaded on IntelliJ. I'm gonna open up a terminal and I'm gonna type ng-serve to start up the project. And it looks like it built successfully without any issues as it should. It's giving me the link for the local host 4200 to check it out. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it looks like the project is loading successfully. That's what we wanted to make sure. I have it here on localhost 4200. Uh, and this is the title, the Angular AWS S3 that we just entered. Next, we'll head back into IntelliJ. We'll take a look at how to get these files ready for production and how we can upload those files to S3. So let's get started on that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hit Control C, and this is gonna stop our development server. And then we're gonna type in ng build. And we could take a look right here in the readme that comes from Angular. When you do ng build, uh, this will compile your project and store the build artifacts into distro. So up here now we have the distro file or distro directory. And then by default, the production build optimizes your application for performance and speed. So let's check out the distro file. And we have uh, the title of our project, and then we have a browser file. And then these are gonna be all the files. So this one, two, three, four files are what we're gonna use. And then we're gonna head over to the AWS console and build an S3 for this. All right, so we're on the AWS console homepage. You can see I already have S3 here in my recent, and I have it saved in my toolbar. But you can come up here to the search and type S3, and it'll show it. And then you just put a little star here, and it'll save it on your toolbar. So we'll select S3, and we're gonna create a bucket. All right, so for the bucket type, we'll leave it as general purpose. For the bucket name, it has to be unique within the global namespace. So a basic thing like Angular app is probably not gonna be unique and already taken. So we're gonna type in my bucket name. Uh, Angular Web App 25. Let's see if that's good. Uh, ownership we can leave as default. This setting here is important. Block public access uh, settings for this bucket. And we're actually gonna uncheck it. So we're not gonna block any public access because it's gonna be a static host website. And then it's giving us this warning here. It's letting us know that uh, everything in this bucket will be public. And unless public access is required for specific and verified use cases, such as static web hosting, which we're doing. So we'll acknowledge that. And we'll scroll down and we can leave everything else as default. We'll hit create bucket. And we can see Angular Web App 25 was created. So we'll click on that. Next, we're gonna hit upload. And we're gonna drag some files in here. So let me pull over this Angular AWS S3. Uh, this is the Angular app we just created. And if you remember, it was in that distro folder. So we hit in the distro, we go into our app and it's in our browser. So you can see it has all the files we'll need and there's an index HTML. So we'll drag these four files, drag them into the bucket. And then what we need to do is hit upload. All right, so upload successful. We'll close the upload. All right, so next we need to go into properties. Scroll down for two static web hosting. All right, so currently S3 static web hosting is disabled. So let's go ahead and enable that. 
enable static web hosting and then it is index.html and the rest are options optional and we'll hit save all right so that's been successfully saved if we scroll back down it's going to give us a url so let's click on this url and see what happens all right so we're getting a 403 forbidden so what this is actually telling us is that it's working uh, the file is there but we're not allowed access to view it so even though the it is public we're still being denied so if we go to the official aws documentation i'll provide a link for that you can see setting permissions for web access and what it tells you here is if you're getting a 403 that means you do not have the proper permissions so we've done the public access and we need to add a bucket policy so we'll go back to our bucket and add a policy for that actually let's go ahead here and we're going to copy this from the official documentation all we're going to have to do is update our name all right so we are going to permissions and bucket policy so we're going to edit this policy go ahead and paste it in this is our bucket name we'll paste our bucket name in here let's see and we'll hit save changes all right so let's scroll back let's go back to our bucket um, properties we'll scroll back all the way down to s3 and let's click on our link and there you have it our app is live on s3 completed in a handful of minutes thanks for watching this video i hope it brought you value uh, if you enjoyed it if it helped you out please give me a like please give me a subscribe i'll have some follow along videos for angular and s3 or i'll show you how to link it to the domain i'll show you how to secure it with https um, if you have any questions leave me a comment and i'll be able to help you out see you on the next video